this class is about how do we do that? Modern numerical techniques for solving a wide range of partial differential equations. I gave uh, several examples in aerospace engineering. That's the department I'm from. But like these are th the same solution techniques are very useful in a wide array of science and engineering applications. Um, for example, I'm going to list, uh, uh, give some examples, not in engineering, but in science. So, so for example, I mean, this is a, a one of the examples that uh, numerical solutions of PD is that are get used by us almost every day. We all look at weather forecasts, right? For those who are not used to look at weather forecasts, now you're in Boston, you look at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I used to not look at weather forecast when I was in Stanford in the West Coast. I mean, there is <laughs> but after I come here, uh, it becomes really necessary. So how many people know how weather forecast is done? How can people predict what the weather looks like even tomorrow? Yes? Exactly. So first of all, you need a set of initial conditions. That's what you described. And what the initial condition is, is is the condition right now. What is the temperature? What is the moisture level? What is the wind speed? Everywhere in the globe right now. That's obtained through data with uh, weather satellites, ground stations, and uh, with uh, pretty sophisticated techniques. So once you have that initial condition, you solve a set of equations that are actually partial differential equations. You derive these partial differential equations using what you just said. What's your name again? Raphael? Yep. Okay, so Raphael said uh, uh, momentum, energy, mass balances. These physical laws, they are satisfied not just uh, over one single control volume. They are satisfied over any control volume or any point on the globe, right? At every single point, no matter where it is, how high it is, you have to satisfy mass balance, you have to satisfy momentum balance and everything. That gives you partial differential equations. If you're just uh, describing the mass balance, for example, in this entire room without considering every point, you get an ordinary differential equation. If you want to consider the same physical law everywhere, no matter what control volume you draw, you get a partial differential equation. So you have to time integrate these partial differential equations, starting from now to tomorrow, to five days, to seven days beyond which you can't really predict much because of uh, a, a chaotic behavior, which we are, maybe you'll say something about this class, but not much, right? But anyway, it's still, weather forecast is pretty useful all the way to like a five days range. And this is done by numerical solution of partial differential equations. So next time you look at weather forecast, uh, this is how it is done. And not just the regular day things are useful, they are also useful in the very frontier of science. So this is uh, one of the situations where LIGO, how many people have heard of LIGO? Most of you, okay, good. So LIGO is the, is the, uh, is the, uh, I don't remember LI stands for, but it's, uh, like, I think it's laser interferometer or something like that. Uh, basically, GO stands for gravitational wave observatory. Right, so, so basically people are observing, uh, testing a hypothesis Einstein posed uh, uh, many years ago that there exists this thing called gravitational waves. And through gravitational waves you can see things you can't see with visible light. And uh, uh, this is actually the first time people observed gravitational waves. And how do people know it is true? Because even before that, first observation. People have performed numerical solution of partial <laughs> differential equations. And that partial differential equation is the equation Einstein derived when he developed general relativity. And people solve these equations for a hypothetical merger of black holes. And the solution they get is that it emits gravitational waves exactly like that. Okay, so basically you have a, a, a longer wavelength signal in the beginning, 
because the black holes rotate around each other. As they get closer and closer, the gravitational wave they emit becomes stronger. You see these are higher uh, oscillations, but they also get higher frequency because they now rotate around each other faster. So, so long before people observed this, they have simulated this using numerical methods of PDEs. And uh, when they look at this signal, they know exactly what it is from. It's from a pair of black holes merging. So that's very cool. That's like a numerical solution of PDEs predicts something that we hadn't even seen yet. OK. Um, so if you come from elsewhere uh, to the United States, this is a, a, a good, this is the right place for studying and applying large scale numerical solution of partial differential equations. So this is uh, just uh, from uh, two years ago, and we have this National Strategic Computing Initiative, uh, basically to ensure the United States is gonna continue leading in this field for the next decades. And uh, uh, as an example of why this is important, they cited uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics, one, one subfield of numerical solution of partial differential equations that has been useful tool for aircraft design uh, since long time ago. And uh, in order for us to take this technology to the next level, we need bigger computers right, that can simulate more details uh, simulating more complex partial differential equations, uh, solve them in more details, more accurately.